Okay, so we're going to make a foldable about family and group names. So on the bottom of your foldable here, you can write family slash group names. You want to open up to the next little paper and draw a line going straight down. Then when you close the foldable, on the top you can write alkali metals and on this side, alkaline earth metals. So we're going to open up the foldable and write down everything we need to know about these two groups, um, where it's hidden so that we can then quiz ourselves. So again, on the next little part of your paper, you're going to draw a line going straight down and then title it Alkali Metals and Alkaline Earth. So Alkali Metals are group one. They have one valence electron. So we want eight valence electrons. It's going to be easier to lose the one electron than it is to gain seven. So the alkali metals lose one electron, which means they form a plus one ion. The word ion is an atom with a charge. So once you gain or lose electrons, it's no longer referred to as an atom. It's now referred to as an ion. Alkali metals are incredibly reactive, so they're very reactive. They're not found pure in nature. Um, and that's because they're found in stable compounds. Another thing to note is that hydrogen is not an alkali metal. Even though it's in group one, hydrogen is a nonmetal. Alkaline earth metals are group two. They have two valence electrons. Since we want a total of eight, it's going to be easier to lose the two electrons than it would be to gain six. And that means group two has a plus two ion. So everybody in group two is going to form plus two. Okay, if you go to the next fold um, and draw a straight line down, we're then going to um, title it Transition Metals and Lanthanides and Actinides. And then underneath where it's covered, you want to list everything that you need to know about these two areas. Transition metals are groups 3 through 12, which we also know is called the D block. They have two valence electrons. But because they're in the D block, they have access to those unique D um, electrons, so they can form more than one charge. And then each ion is going to be a different color. So if you remember back to the flame test lab that we did, only two of the lab benches had a chemical that had color to them. Um, station one was cobalt, and so it was this pinky color. And station three was copper, and it was a green color. The rest of the chemicals were all white looking because they're not transition metals. Lanthanides and actinides are what we call the elements that would go back into the periodic table. So they're the bottom two rows. They're called lanthanides and actinides because they would go next to those two elements in the periodic table. It also represents our F block. And because they would go back into the transition metals, they're also known as inner transition metals.
And that's everything you need to know about those two groups. So again, move to the next piece of paper, draw a line straight down. And we're going to title these two sections halogens and noble gases. Where the information would be hidden, you want to write this down so you can quiz yourself. <coughs> halogens are group 17 or 7A and we'll talk about what that A means in a little bit. They have seven valence electrons so it's going to be easier this time to gain one more than it would be to lose the seven. So halogens gain one electron and therefore they form a negative one ion. Halogens are also the most reactive nonmetals. Noble gases are group 18 or 8A. Because they have eight valence electrons, they have a full outer shell, so they do not react. A fancy word for do not react or non-reactive is inert. To say something is inert means that it's not going to react. Moving to the second to last page, you want to title it post-transition metal. Draw your line straight down and on the other side label it active metal. Alright, so the information that you need hidden for post-transition metals that you need to understand, post means after, so these are the metals after the transition metals. Another way to describe their location is the metals under the stairs, except aluminum. Aluminum is simply a metal, it's not a special class of metal. Post-transition metals also have similar properties to the inner transition metals which have similar properties to the transition metals. So all three of those, anytime you see transition in the name, they have various charges that can be formed and they have colored ions. Um, active metals are groups one and two. And they're called active because they lose electrons easily. So the word active or reactive just means how easily you can gain or lose electrons. And group one and group two will lose electrons the easiest out of all of the atoms or all of the elements on the periodic table. So now we're going to move to our last section. and we're going to title it representative representative elements and on the other side we're going to title it charges so representative elements are also known as main group elements and it's any element in the S and P block. So, and that would include hydrogen and aluminum. Um, a lot of times the group number is followed by the letter A. So if we go back to um, the halogens and the noble gases, that was 7A and 8A because they're representative elements. If you go back to your transition metals, you could say that their group numbers are followed by the letter B. So A re would be representative or main group elements. The letter B would represent the transition metals. Ch 
charges is something that we're definitely going to use the entire semester, so it's really important that you know. A positive charge means you lost electrons, and metals will lose electrons. A negative charge means you gain electrons, and nonmetals always gain electrons. So if we set up a little chart of group versus charge, you'll have to memorize so if I give you an element, you can tell me the charge right away. All elements in group one form a plus one charge, and that would include hydrogen. All elements in group two form a plus two charge. All elements in groups three through 12 can have um, a variety of charges. Their charges vary. We would have to be told. Group 14, I'm sorry, 13 has a plus three charge. Group 14, now group 14 would have four valence electrons, so we could either gain four or lose four. So group 14 is a plus or minus four. So how do you know which one it is? Well, if it's a metal in group four, it would be plus four, and if it's a non-metal in group four, it's a minus four. 15, we now have five valence electrons, so now it's gonna start being easier to gain electrons than to lose them. Group 16 is negative two, 17 is negative one, 18 would be zero or none because they are, have their full outer shell. Now there are two transition metals that you're required to know the charge of, and that's because they only form this one charge. Silver, for example, is always a plus one. So that's the one of the two that you have to always know. Even though silver is in the transition metals, it will always be plus one. Zinc, even though it's in the transition metals, is always going to be plus two.